Hello everyone, uh, this is Alfadi and I'd like to welcome you to another one of those video series uh, that uh, we typically um, uh, you know, try to produce and try to publish through our channel, Sierra International. And uh, this particular one is going to revisit a topic that uh, first came on the air through our channel back in April of 2018 when I have uh, with me Dr. Jay Smith here in the studio and we talked about the unknown history of Islam and part of that series was uh, the issue of the Qibla. As you know, uh, Muslims basically face in a one specific direction when they're praying. You go to the mosque and you'll see the mihrab or the direction of the uh, prayer called the direction of Qibla, basically. However, at least the first 200 years of Islam began to reveal, archaeologically speaking, through the work of Dan Gibson, some um, controversies and contradictions in terms of which direction uh, the Qibla was facing at the beginning and when it became fixed towards Mecca. Now that was back in April 2018. Around December of the same year, 2018, about a year ago, because right now we are in December of 2019, um, Dr. David King basically um, ended up uh, writing a refutation of Dan Gibson's work on the Qibla. And since then, there has been a back and forth, basically, um, uh, you know, uh, rebuttals between the two. And primarily, uh, Dan Gibson did a number of series about a couple of months ago to try to explain uh, his position and also to defend his findings. With me here today, of course, no better than Dr. Jay Smith, who came back again to really unpack this so-called Qibla controversy. And obviously, uh, myself and Dr. Jay like to do this at an academic level because we want to take the arguments out there and unpack them in an academic way to help you and help anyone else who is really passionate about topics like this. Our goal is really to do kind of like a peer review, if you wish. We're not here to attack. We're not here to try to uh, ridicule. We're not here to try to expose anything. But we are going to take a hard look at, uh, at arguments and bring uh, about our own way of analyzing it and assessing it. And with that says, I would like to welcome you back to the studio, Dr. J. Oh, it's good to be here with you again. It's been a few months since we were in this studio earlier, uh, unpacking other areas like the, the scientific problems of, within the Quran. But let, I want to back up a little bit as to why this whole controversy between Dr. David King, who is considered to be the world authority on the Qibla. This is his whole area of expertise. He's quite old now. I, I think he's possibly in his late 70s or early 80s. I don't know his exact date. Uh, but he's, he's long retired, and he no longer is involved in the research. And because he's the world authority, what Dan Gibson found confronts everything that this man has done. His entire career is, uh, you might say, in question as a result of Dan's research. And you can then understand the reaction that we're getting from uh, Dr. David King. Dr. David King is from Britain. Uh, I, you can Let's put a look at their pictures up here. You can see Dr. David King on the left there and Dan Gibson on the right. Dr. David King is very reputable, very knowledgeable, uh, certainly uh, is well respected in the academic community. Dan King Gibson does not have a PhD, uh, is not well known in the academic community. Right. He is what I would call an archaeologist archaeologist. He is the man. He's like an Indiana Jones. You remember Indiana Jones, that old character uh, that was, though he was there studying in his office, he was always going out into the field. And it was because he was going out into the field that he got into all these problems. Uh, he is Doc, uh, Dan Gibson from 1979 uh, to 19, uh, so 2004. 1979 to 2004. So we're talking about 25 years. Spent his time specifically amongst the Bedouins. Uh, That's right. Learned their language. Not only learned Arabic, but learned how to speak them. And what he decided to do was actually to go to the places where these problems were confronting himself. Now, here's his book that he came out in 2014. This is known as 
chronic geography and if any of you get it you can buy it uh, on amazon.co or uh, uk or amazon.com but you can also get it in pdf you don't have to buy a hard cover book like i do i like to get it hard covered because i like to mark it up and i like to read through it and go through all this material this was not on the qibla per se that's right the beginning uh... what he found is when he looked at the quran when he looked at this book here the quran and when he started unpacking many of the geographical locations he noticed that they were didn't make sense for mecca and that's why he wasn't expecting to find what he did he didn't go out with that intention he did what we're doing and what everybody should do and what any good academic should do and that is if you find something that bothers you if you find something that looks contradictory if you find something that doesn't make sense within a book like the quran as important as the quran is then for heaven's sakes go and investigate it and that's what he did and that's what this book is all about so that's the geographical difficulties he found over and over again that there are 24 times it refers to these people from Tamud. Right. Tamud would be the Nabataeans. Yeah. Ad, Tamud, you know. All Ad would be the people of Uz in the Bible. Right. The Midianites seven times refers to the Midianites here and 23 times to these people from Ad. <laughs> what he noticed is if you're gonna have this much contact this who's his well this is this prophet but who's only named four times in the Quran if you're going to have this much contact with people, ongoing, almost like a daily contact with them, then you better be pretty near where they are living. That's right. And exactly. Do you know where these Ad, Tamud, and the, these Midianites live? Uh, but certainly they're not around Mecca, and they are way north. Uh, I mean, north to the point that it is even so far from the surrounding neighboring uh, cities of Mecca itself, or even Medina, uh, for that matter. Absolutely. They're, yeah. they're up in what we now know today as Jordan. Correct. This is the Nabataean area, and this is much further north, 600 miles further north. And there's no way you can have daily contact with people 600 miles in the north unless you had a helicopter and were able to go back and forth 1,200 miles in one day. That does not exist, not on a daily contact. But also he noticed that there were lots of references to things that just made no sense for Mecca. References to the, where this prophet lived, had a valley going through it, had streams going through it, plural, had a parallel valley, had clay, loam, uh, had trees had olive trees exactly. that was the big clincher exactly i mean so this the very description does not match with the present day mecca you're from arabia oh i've Are never, seen, I've never seen any of these things no olive trees yeah. only exist around the mediterranean have always only existed around the mediterranean and that's why when he saw this he realized this cannot be this doesn't make sense but he didn't know how to answer that no so as a good researcher what do you do well you don't just sit there and read books you go to those places. Exactly. You go to those situations, to those situations, to places where they, and then look at the situation, and then you try to make sense of what you're looking at. You try to observe, and then you write down what you're observing, and then you try to come to conclusions. And that's what he tried to do with this book here. Came out in 2011, so that's eight years ago. Correct. Then he noticed something that was even more troubling, and he noticed that when he went to these places, he came, kept on coming across these mosques but these mosques had qibla walls now how do you find a qibla wall do you know how to find a qibla wall i mean in a mosque in a mosque oh usually that's where the mihrab is which is basically uh, uh, an area uh, along a wall where it is uh, um, uh, you know in k in well that's for today that yeah, makes sense that's, that's true but there were no mihrabs in the 7th you're talking century. about back then got back it. then got it. so yeah. what do you do with an archaic mosque in fact what do you do with an old mosque from the six you know so i'm saying sixth century Fifth century, you know what I'm saying? Fifth century, that's troubling in itself. Right. Mosque from the fifth century, that's even before Muhammad was born. That's right. Sixth century, seventh century, eighth century. Up until the eighth century, they didn't have mihrabs, but they did have what they called qibla walls. And mosques are built, I'm going to use the Quran to show you, they're not built like this, like we do. We have our churches built like the cross. The big cathedrals are built like the, right. in, this, uh, in the image of a cross. Correct. So they're long, and then you have the nave at the front. And then you have all the pews down here. So Correct. You, you, you stand at the nave, and that's the holy place. That's where the, uh, the vicar or the priest stands or the preacher or the pastor. They all stand up here, and all the people sit down here. So our buildings are this way. The mosques are this way. And the reason why is because this has to be the Qibla wall. So it could either be the longest, that, basically. The longest wall yeah. is the Qibla wall. So it could either be that one or this one. You only have two options. 
Correct. And the reason you want it to be the Qibla wall, because you want as many people as possible who are in one long line in the Especially region for the that. Front <laughs> the front Especially line. the front wall. Especially the front wall. And yeah. why is that? Yeah. So that their toes are touching. Because right. the more that their feet are touching, the more that you get baraka as you're praying. Exactly. And that's why you, you there are mathematical equations on how much baraka you get depending on how many feet touch. I remember I used to go to a mosque in Senegal when I was there, and there was a guy with, with a stick, not, not a hard one, but he would tap your toes if your feet were not not touching. He would make sure push your foot. So you're having. It's almost like electrical current will go through all the bodies. I guess up and down, up and down, up and down, all the way across. So the more you get, the more baraka right. you get, the more advantageous it is for you because you want to. Get, that's why you're doing it. The only reason you're praying is not to get closer to God, as we've said before. The only reason Muslims pray is for obedience, is for submission, is to receive this baraka. So it's recorded by the angel sitting on the right shoulder. So it gets them to heaven. This is how they earn off their salvation. And that's why you want to have long walls. You want to have long walls for the Qibla. That's why Dan knew this. And so when he went to these archaic mosques, which uh, were places of prayer, what's the word in Arabic? Mihrab? No, not the, the word for, for places of prayer. It's the masjid. Oh, uh, I, th I thought you were talking also about direction. Yes, it's masjid, basically. Masjid, that's, that's the, the building. Name. That's the building, The building yes. where you actually pray. You go exactly. to the masjid. He wanted to notice where this wall was going. And they should have been facing this way down to Mecca. If that's of course when the tradition well, right and where does the tradition come from well it comes from we know all this it comes from the traditions begin with Ibn Hisham in 833 but more most of this to do with the Qibla and all that comes from Al-Buhari, Sahih Muslim, Ibn Dawud, all those and those are from the late 9th century 870 and later and it's from the late 9th century that they're saying that at the time of 620 I want to say 622, between 622 and 624, that two-year period. Correct. And they're quoting the Quran, chapter 2, verse 149 and 150, which stipulates that when Muhammad moved to Medina, he had he tried to make a relationship with the Jews there in Medina. They were the ones who had the commerce, controlled the commerce, and they didn't accept him as a prophet because he did not follow in the prophetic line, and he didn't do anything to prove he's a prophet, didn't even know God's holy name. And so... He then, they, after they rejected him, he rejected them and conveniently got this revelation that's recorded in the Quran in chapter 2, 149, 150, which stipulates that the Qibla must now be redirected according to what Muslims say today. From Jerusalem? To? To Mecca. They say Mecca. The only problem is that Let's particular see. verse doesn't mention Jerusalem Let's or see. Mecca. Let's see what it says. Should we read it? I've got it right yeah. here in front of me. I'm going to read it in English, but you can yeah. read it in Arabic. In fact, I'd like you to read it in Arabic. You're the Arabic expert in the world today. Where you go? This is the reason why I love working with you, <laughs> Al-Fadi, because you're the guy. I'm no to, expert. You're my go-to guy, because not only are you Arab, not only are you just any Arab, you're Saudi Arabian, which means you read actually the Quranic Arabic, and you understand the Quranic Arabic, and you're doing a doctorate in this area, so you're going to be a world expert in this very thing. So I'm going to just look at the right. English and let you see if that's the English sure. is correct. So in chapter uh, 2, and for those of you who are watching, chapter 2 means Surah 2. Just open up your own Qurans. Uh, in chapter, starting with uh, verse uh, 149. Let's start with verse 148. For every nation there is a direction to which they face. Direction. Right. Okay, there it is. You see, so, I mean, it's very specific. Every nation has one direction. Okay. Not talking about directions, plural. Okay. Every nation is associated with a direction. And for those of you who are wondering why he's being so specific on this, you're going to see why. Because this is what comes up. This is the controversy that's going to come up as we un unpack these, these episodes. So hasten towards all that is good, whoever you may be. Allah will bring you together. Truly, Allah is able to do all things, 149. And from where, who's, wheresoever you start forth, now this is referring to the prayers, Turn your face in the direction singular of the Al Masjid Al Khram. Yeah. Wherever you are, notice it doesn't matter where you at, you have to face one specific direction. Now, the word used here, as you rightly um, pointed out, it doesn't say Mecca, it says Al Masjid Al Haram, the holy mosque. Now, my argument always is this prove to me that this Masjid Al Haram is the one in Mecca. 
there's no reference here. In fact, I have to look at the parentheses, and you can see in the English, they put a parentheses there, at Mecca. They've had to add that. That's called commentary. That's been that's added right. at, a little, at a later Using date. tradition, basically. They're looking at tradition. So they've had to add, but that's not in the Arabic, right? I'll show you the Arabic once I've finished here. That indeed the truth from your Lord and their Lord and, and uh, Allah is not unaware of what you do. Verse 150. And from wheresoever you start forth, that's for your prayers, turn your face in the direction of al Masjid al It's repeating. It's making it very clear. Your direction, not directions, and whosoever you are, turn your faces towards it. Singular. It, singular. Yep. Okay? Exactly. Just read the Arabic and see if that's correct. So, I mean, uh, right now, uh, w when we look at it, uh, in 149, وَمِنْ حَيْثُ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَإِنَّهُ لَلْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكَ وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ وَمِنْ حَيْثُ خَرَجْتَ فَوَلِّ وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وحيثما كنتم فولوا وجوهكم شطرة لئلا يكون يكون للناس عليكم حجة إلا الذين ظلموا منهم فلا تخشوهم واخشوني ولأتم نعمتي عليكم ولعلكم تهتدون. So here is very clear. فولي وجهك turn your face meaning speaking to any of you شطرة meaning in the direction of Al-Masjid Al-Haram, one specific location. Okay. I mean, that's what it's saying. That's what it's saying. So yeah. there is, according to Islamic tradition, referring to the Quran, chapter 2, verse 149 and 150, it is a one direction, one place, specific, the Masjid Al-Haram. No reference to Mecca, from no reference to Jerusalem. You just There is a change, though. And it's to go to this place, the Masjid al-Haram. Okay. That's right. Now, take that on board. That's all they've got. That's all we've got. This is all that we have on the Qibla and the Quran. We have to go to the traditions written in the ninth century. So, if you take that on board, you can then understand why Gibson came up and had to write this book. Right, the Qibla. This is it. This is the book. And if you have a chance, get it. Everybody should have this in their library. This is an amazing book. It's very colorful. It's got all kinds of pictures. It's got graphs. You can see all the way through it. I mean, Dan Gibson has done an amazing job. And he job. uses the verse in there uh, from the Quran, of course. He does. He starts yeah. with that. Yeah. And what he did, this is what everybody should do. If you're doing a study on a Qibla, if you're doing a study on mosque, if you're doing a study on anything that is physical, you should go physically to that place, right? To me, that's a no-brainer. That seems stand. Uh, uh, it, would, it should be something that's quite obvious. It right. should be from the outset. Anybody who who is an expert on the Qibla should be able to do that, and that's what D Dan did. Now he was not did not claim to be an expert on the Qibla. He did not get trained to be an excellent on the Qibla. Uh, he did not take any studies. He did not go to any university to study about the Qibla. He didn't do any of this. He just saw that there was a problem, and so therefore he wanted to find out how to solve it. So he went from mosque to mosque to mosque to mosque to mosque. In fact, he's still going. Over a hundred mosques he went to, physically. Went there. Right. Looked for the Qibla wall. Took the coordinates, not using Google Maps. He, and we'll get into that, what he did. He used the Aster satellites, which are the Japanese uh, thermal imaging, which are the most sophisticated satellites you can use to get the exact coordinates to see what direction they're going. Now you only have two directions you can go with, either that one or this one. Correct. You can't go this way, this one. And if this way, then you want to go that way. If it's this way, then you want to go that way, obviously. So it's very simple to do that. It's not very hard. And most, all these mosques have, are, most of them are in ruins. Some of them are still standing. Others have been re destroyed and rebuilt. So you need to go to the original floor plans. You need to go down to where the, the first mosque is. Or in some cases, there are completely two different mosques. One mosque here, another mosque back up here, like the Anjar Mosque in Jordan. This one's facing this way, and this one has been built. This was built in 701. This was built in 730. And this one is facing that direction, and this one is facing this direction. And it was built at a later time up above it, looking on a completely different direction. Two different mosques, Which 30 years very apart. Very obvious. Obviously, there's a change. Now, yeah. he noticed this, and he's kept on noticing this from everywhere he went. And he said, hold on a minute. Why hadn't anybody been told him this? So he finally decided to go back and film every one of these and picture of them and start to put it together. That's the conclusion of his studies. Now, so far, is there anything wrong with what Dan Gibson has done so far that you can see? 
Not at all. I mean, um, if you're a researcher, you have to do this. And again, I mean, I don't see any problem if I was the researcher and then Dan Gibson came back later and tried to either examine my research or refute it with analytical data. That's research. That's academia. That's academia, and that's what anybody who is coming up with a problem should do. Rather than just sit there and get upset and say this is wrong, I, he wanted to find out, well, what's the reason? Why is it? And is this so? And is this consistent? And do we find other examples of it? Not just one that's off. If you just found one that was off, that would make sense that that was probably a problem with that, whoever built that mosque. He wanted to find with where they're all off. And what he tended to find was that he found that there were not just one, not just 10, not just 20, over 100. That's a lot. That's a lot. And they were all going in different directions. And he said, oh, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. So if you see mosques going in many, many different directions, what would you think off the, right off the top of your head? Without coming at the, I'm coming this without knowing where we're going to go with this. What would you think? Just try to. I mean, the first thought will come to my mind, confusion about confusion. the direction okay. of Qibla. Uh, okay, and why? Why the confusion, do you think? Uh, probably your... they didn't have, um, you know, uh, scientific methods to follow. They were ignorant. That's right. That would be my conclusion too, right? right? These people are ignorant. They just don't know better. We know better today because now we have spectral uh, th th uh, thermometer. We have satellite technology. We have GPS coordinates that are so specific. We know today exactly how they would make these. So, in other words, you're saying let's give them the benefit of the doubt. That will be the first reaction. That's right. You know, we will get. And by the way, I mean, uh, it's, this is just our introduction. I mean, I just want people to know that this is just the beginning of this series that will end up probably titling the Quran, uh, the Qibla co uh, uh, controversy. Okay, and this is exactly what Dan King did. Dan King. David King, you mean. Did I say Dan? I'm saying Dan Gibson, David King. See, even I, I'm so glad that I'm not, uh, I'm not the, the papal bull, because <laughs> I make mistakes all the time. But I'm willing to admit my, my mistakes. Notice I admitted it right there. I got the wrong name, I quickly admitted it, yeah. and I corrected it, thanks to you. I mean, David King cannot do that. Why do you think is that? Well, let's go and see what happened. Because David King got a hold of this book. And he thought at first it was a waste of time. Why should he do it? Because who is this guy? He's nothing. He's an amateur, which is true, he's an amateur. Uh, but he spent 25 years actually going to these places. How many of these mosques, these over 100 mosques, did David King, do you think, go to? If, if uh, our discussion, you know, is a testimony about this, I think you told me one only. Only one. Yeah. He only went to the Samarkand Mosque. In all of his years as the world authority on the Qibla, he only ever went to one Qibla. And I have to tell you, even if he went to five or ten, it still doesn't match what Dan Gibson have done. By definition, if you're going to be an expert in this area of the field, I would assume that you would have actually gone and been to these places physically to actually look and see if this is correct, to even even know. In fact, he didn't even know that these other kibbas were off. He had no idea because he hadn't been there. No one had done any study. Almost, I won't say, and I don't know, I should ask Dan, and we're going to be doing this. We're going to be calling Dan uh, in a few weeks, and we're going to have a live air uh, with going on and asking some questions that we've come up with. Dan Gibson, by Dan the way, we're talking about Dan Gibson. There are a lot of Dan's. There's Dan Brubaker, the Dan That's Gibson. Right. This is the That's Dan right. Gibson, and, and, right. uh, and I would like to ask him, uh, you know, when we go through this, just how many of these has he actually seen that were completely off that worth he's the first to discover them because a lot of these people didn't in fact he was just tell he was just telling me he just emailed me yesterday and he just said jay you know we're still coming up with brand new mosques they're still coming up to me and what's happening is people all over the world now are now okay, starting to, to email this. him exactly. said jay there dan here's another mosque here's the we have it this is a mosque here's the foundation would you like us to go and look at it he said yes here's what you need to do here's how you find the kibla and so he's actually telling them to do it for him because he can't just he's spending so much time now traveling he needs other people to help and if any of you do know and you come across any older foundations of what used to be a mosque there especially if there's a new mosque with an older one next to it or behind it somewhere somewhere in the same vicinity uh, which is the older version could you let us know and uh, we we'll, do we want to put the email where they can get a hold of you 
Uh, yes, I mean, uh, in terms of that, it's very easy. They can always go to my uh, website, sirainternational.com, and in there you can just click on Contact Us, and it will come directly to me. My email is very easy. It's alfadi at sirainternational.com. I get emails from people all the time. Or you can go right up to Dan Gibson's. If you, if you go up to, just go up on YouTube, go to Dan Gibson, go to his YouTube site, and he has uh, there on, on, on every one of his videos, he has how you can contact him. Let him know that you found a new mosque, because he would like to find out about that mosque. If you're near it, he'll probably show you how you then find the coordinates for it. And then that will just start. If, then if you go up to the Gibson, uh, Dan Gibson tools, you will see the Kibla tools. He has a whole section uh, just on the internet, just on Kibla tools. They will add that up on the the growing list of mosques. So, David King comes across this book. David King gets angry, and he decides to write a response. In December 2018, a year ago, he wrote this response. It's um, it's not a nice response. He's very vitriolic. He gets quite antagonistic. He gets quite angry. He gets very emotional. Unfortunately, uh, you can see that uh, that he's reacting wrongly. This is the wrong kind of reaction. What if we start with that uh, response and begin to unpack it, beginning with the next episode? Let's do that because I'd like to then show, and I'd like to start walking through that response. But I, what I want to do is I want to show you what how, what Dan Gibson's coming up because the nice thing about David. King, regardless of how he did it, at least that makes uh, shows Dan Gibson that he needs to answer these questions. So that's what we're going to start with in the next episodes. Wonderful. Thank you for doing this, and hopefully um, everybody is uh, as excited as I am right now to begin to unpack these back and forth, basically arguments that are being raised. Again, our job here really is not to take any sides. Our job here is to look at the data, look at the analyses unpack him and reach our own conclusions. Um, we're not here, by the way, saying this is what Dan Gibson's conclusion is, or we're not saying this is what Dr. David um, also King's conclusion is. Uh, we leave that up to them. Our job is to take the data, analyze it, unpack it for you, the audience. We want you to reach your conclusion based on what we will be showing you. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching. Please like our video. And we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sierra International. And be sure also to click the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we upload new videos into the channel. And finally, I like to prayerfully encourage you to become a patron through Patreon. Your giving is much needed and will enable us to produce more and more of videos like this so that we can publish them on a weekly basis. So thank you in advance.